My name is Mr. Tavares. You're in my grade 11 university math class. Today's objective is to learn about Pascal's triangles and how it relates to probability. The vertex is this value here, represents the x. A number that both 4 and 2 go into, preferably the lowest number. If the denominators are the same, it's easy to compare fractions. I need four points about yourself. Once you hand them in, you can go. Another school day. Every Friday after school, I go home, pack up, head out to Buffalo, and uh, prepare for my game Saturday night. Your Buffalo man is back in Murray number 11, Johnny Woo! Johnny Davines! And there's JT, John Tavares, closing in on 1,700 career points. I mean, there's nothing this guy hasn't done. It's unbelievable. John Tavares is a teacher of Philip Ocock. Put the numbers into the equation, it's a formula. It's amazing to see this kind of transformation of this regular teacher into this uh, star athlete. As Johnny T drives through the key. The uh, oldest, the best, the smartest, you know, the best goal scorer, best point producer ever in uh, the National Lacrosse League. Johnny T is a living legend. That's just, he's a... Uh, He's a Gretzky, Michael Jordan, Joe Montana, all, all in one. I don't think anybody else has been as successful as he is at the age he is. You know, he's my idol as a kid. You know, it's now that, you know, instead of watching him, you know, you, you know you're on the same team as him. It's drink with truth, it's, it's awesome. It's nice to have someone prominent at the school, you know, who came from the local community, who came to this high school. He's one of the best in, ever to play the game. So when the kids realize how good he is, it's a pretty special thing. And then they Google him and stuff and really find out and they come back and say, you know, oh man, he's got this many points. The fans of Buffalo love him. When they're chanting his name and I think there's a lady in one of the ends has a big photo head of him. You know, so here's a guy that we uh, play pickup hockey with and, and uh, drink beers with. So that's funny for us because we know him personally and, and now we see really how special of an athlete he is. We'll see him on a Monday. Hey John, how'd it go this weekend? He's like, eh, not too bad, I had a pretty good game. And then we'll look at the stats and he'll have six goals, four assists. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. pretty good game. <laughs> if someone asks me what I do, I tell them I'm a math teacher. I don't tell them I'm a lacrosse player. Lacrosse, to me, is like a part-time job. Um, where a lot of other people like to say, you know, he's a professional athlete, but, you know, I teach Monday to Friday. He really enjoys math. He's a numbers guy, you know, much like with sports. He, he sort of loves the precision of math as much as, like, precision in the game. All right, good job, Jen. Very good. Any questions? He's not only a good teacher, but also a good role model. I love coming to work. It's, there's not a day that I think about, oh, I gotta go teach today. I like coming into work. I like going to play lacrosse. John is in great shape. You know, not to pick on him for his age, but at his age level, he is in phenomenal shape. He takes really great care of himself. <gasps> Athletes need to be in good physical condition, good aerobic condition. So you can't really kind of slack off and stick around for too long. Obviously he's now 45, I think, so he's been working hard in our weight room. Other people have been kind of going in with him, doing his workouts. He's keeping them in shape. I hear people that knew him when he was in high school, like as an athlete, and they're like, he was just unbelievable. <laughs> Captain of the football team and the three-point shooter and the basketball team. And and he was such a good athlete even then that we looked up to him and we wanted to be on those teams. And I don't think he'd admit to this, but like he called his own plays as quarterback. Ferocious appetite for sport, great competitor. It's amazing to see at his stage in the career that he's able to be so successful and still lead the team as a captain of the Buffalo Bayonets. Okay, 
Out you go. I'm just gonna play a little bit of hockey with the kids. Have some family time before I go to Buffalo for a couple days. Definitely one of the perks of a teaching job is it's a great family job in terms of the hours. Can we this puck? No, I let John take over on the rink and I uh, help flood and shovel, so it works out works out well. Katrina's a great person, great wife, and you know she's very supportive of my lacrosse career. I tell everybody that I have two kids and she has three. I've got a seven and six year old, and she's got a seven, six, and a 45 year old. And uh, I'm, I think I'm more work than seven, six year olds. I met John, he was 33, 34. He said five more years tops. So that was 12 years ago. There's times where I have to pull him out of bed on Monday mornings and just get him moving because he's literally stuck because he's so sore. And, Beaten. Seven six, Jesse. I think once it's part of your life for so many years, it's gonna be hard to let it go. Oh yeah! Nice Always encourage John to play as long as he can. Um, I don't ever want to see him give it up. You can only do Chris. it for so long in your life. He's got some young kids, and they enjoy watching him play too. So I think he's sticking around for them too. And I think if coaches and GMs aren't gonna get rid of him. He's still scoring, you know, three, four goals a game at 45. It's almost ridiculous. Oh, yeah! 8 7 up. He still has so much passion for things that he's doing, so it's, it's always nice to, to see him as a teacher and an athlete and a dad. It's nice to have this kind of uh, double life, if you will. You know, kind of the weekend warrior and the, uh, I guess, teacher during the week. It's part of the reason why I still love playing lacrosse, because it keeps me young, um, gets me out, and keeps me active. I mean, lacrosse is not the most popular sport, but if you went to a uh, Buffalo Bandit game, you'd wonder why it isn't. 16,000 fans root me on. The atmosphere is amazing. They're very passionate. They're, uh, they're crazy in a good way. Box lacrosse is a combination of several sports. Definitely a combination of ice hockey, basketball, and even football. It's played in the summer in Canada in a hockey rink with no ice, so you're playing on cement, condensed in a smaller floor. I have to say it's a lot rougher. Five guys playing with, with a goalie, but uh, the similarities can be comparable to basketball with offense, defense, movement of the court, picks, rolls, you know, someone's got to shoot. Um, there's a lot of hitting. Um, there's a 30 second shot clock, there's penalties, there's power plays, there's men down. Um, there are no offsides. It's very confined. In field, you're going to see anywhere from 10 to 20 foot passes. In here, you're seeing maybe 3 to 10 foot passes. When you, when you do confine it, I mean, it adds for that much more hitting, that much more contact. You, you got to keep your head on the swivel. There's a lot going on, and communicating with your teammates is definitely huge. Because if you don't know a pick's coming, you're going to get blown up. The expectation of the squad this year is to win the whole thing. This team didn't make playoffs last year, and uh, a pride was shattered. And, and you know, it's a, we're just out to uh, gain a little respect and take a run at the cup. Being in the playoff hunt is uh, really important. Last year, we were the only team not to make the playoffs. We were the odd man out, six and ten, not uh, up to the bandit standards. This year, you know, we're about a. Uh, third of the way through the season, we're four and one. I think the guys really see that when you stick to the game plan and want to go out there and outwork somebody, good things are going to happen. We opened up with a, a loss to Philadelphia and we won four straight since then. In 2008, we, uh, we won the championship cup here and it was uh, one of the most amazing 
things in my life to happen so far. This place is packed, 18, 18 and a half thousand people, all decked out with wigs and signs and noisemakers and, and all the band's colors. We call it Bandit Land. Fans, they, they demand um, hard work. Fans that really care, and, and you know we're we're very fortunate to have such a great fan base here. It's a great city to play for. Uh, 15,000, 16,000 fans rooting on in game in, game out. The atmosphere is amazing. They're very passionate. They're uh, they're crazy in a good way. A lot of hardcore fans. They really get into the game. Lacrosse is not the most popular sport, but if you went to a uh, Buffalo Bandit game, you'd wonder why it isn't. If you're playing in this league, you want to play in Buffalo. We're basically weekend warriors. It's an opportunity for us to, to be professional athletes and professional coaches. A lot of us are, are teachers, firefighters, and police officers, construction workers, iron workers. There's lots of guys with the blue collar jobs, just uh, construction and uh, a total eclectic mix. And uh, you get to leave your job for a day or two and uh, get to be kids. And it's a three, one, two, three, Ready? let's go. Where we have a big, tough physical team this year. Uh, we have a lot of veterans, a lot of people around the league think that we're too old, too slow. I think that we actually have a good combination of veterans and youth. Uh, our coach is uh, Troy Cordley. We just brought him in this year, kind of uh, switched things up. Balls to the side, Bryce thrown to the white line. You know, he's coach of the year last year, so I mean, he's very good coach. You know, he's got us on track. You know, he's putting guys in the right spot. Pass, curl out, opposite side with that ball. Get the pass from behind you, go! He definitely yells and gets animated. I think last game he kicked a shoe on the floor by accident, trying to kick a water ball or something like that, so. You can't change it! Boo! We've got some real good outside shooters, some inside players. We're, we're well rounded. Billy D. Smith is our uh, assistant captain, big physical defender, one of the hardest hitting guys in, in the league. He is a very scary uh, individual, and uh, not too many people want to go up against him. Yeah, yeah I do like the Ross First thing I do if a guy comes near me, I slash him and cross check him. Mark Steinhouse. When he strapped his gear on, he's uh, very focused, very intense. He's actually my brother-in-law. Me and him both uh, both got assistant captains. We actually split it. Um, Sean Williams is the guy that uh, sees the floor real well and has a great shot from the outside. I mean, you talk about a wily pet throughout the league, captain, assistant on you know every team he's played for. John Tavares is our Wayne Gretzky of, of our sport. You know, he's 45 years old. He's been with this organization for 23 years. He's the all-time leading scorer, all-time assist maker. He's just a total package. Okay, let's try this round, boys. Let's try this one. I think, you know, you talk about everybody and then you have a totally different category for him. You know what I mean? He's kind of, he's standing alone in that crowd. He's like, oh, this is a year JT's finally going to age and then the next team has four goals, the next team has five goals. I've been in the league 12 years, I'm turning 32 in the summer. And my rookie year, he was 34. So he was still two years older than I am right now. I can't imagine playing another seven years, never mind, until I'm old. <laughs> These young guys, you know, we gotta keep them healthy. It's amazing that he still is able to compete with athletes that are half his age. He keeps coming back and he keeps surprising us. 45 years old, just crushing it out there. Everyone talks about you know how great he is at scoring and this and that. And believe me, he's a better teammate. He never misses practice. He comes in. He's the hardest working guy. You know everything he gets, he deserves because he's worked harder than anyone in the past. I don't know 20, however long he's been in the league, 20 some years now. It's sort of weird to think that someone born in the 90s is actually a teammate of John's. So <laughs> I, I think that's kind of funny. Coaching against John Tavares, you know that he's such a smart player and such a great player that you're not going to stop him. His lacrosse IQ is, is through the roof. Toronto's had our number. Every time we play them, it's, you know, it's a hard fought battle. Don't have to stress how important this one is. If we get this one, it's gonna pay dividends at the end of the season. One, two, three, yes! Yes! let's go boys. Tonight, uh, we play the Toronto Rock. They're a very explosive offensive team. 
Uh, big game. It's the uh, tiebreaker. We won, beat them first game 12-10. And uh, tonight, if we get a win here, it's going to go a long way to the standings at the end of the year. I'm at a 9.15, get some videos done, uh, check out the other team, check out what we did well last year, what we did bad, obviously. Going through X is huge. We have to move bodies through X, getting the possession going east and west. There's no communication here. You should be pressuring the ball a little bit more, right? We need to get two or three quick sticks against them. So look, when you're winding up, look down low. Here we go, boys, down here. Three shooters out of the corner, everybody with the ball. We got about an hour of uh, on the floor, just shoot around, just getting the legs loose, you know. Goalie's favorite drill is fire away at the goalie. It's a way of getting our sticks going for the game. And then uh, we had to all go have a little bit of food down the hall. Got to get it into a game day. It's pretty much the last meal before a game, so. Got to eat up. We got our workout cut out for us tonight. If we we can uh, play some uh, physical lacrosse and and stay in lanes that we need to be in and, and force force and dictate where the shot comes from, then um, we should have some success. There's times where you know we you know, try to motivate and and pump them up, and then there's times where you know that they're ready and motivated to play in front of 15,000 and give it all. Obviously, we're four and one. They're two and two. You know, this league is so tight, we obviously like to just uh, keep separating ourselves from the, from the pack. Toronto's had our number. Last few years, they, they put us out, whether it was in playoffs or elimination game at the end of the year. Every time we play them, it's, you know, it's a hard-fought battle. We don't have to stress how important this one is, right? This is a tiebreaker, too. All right, we get this one. It's going to pay dividends at the end of the season. One, two, three. Yes! Let's go, boys. Here we go, boys. Offensively, just a couple of reminders. All five man offense. We have quality shots. Don't force anything. Smart, all right? Defensively, pressure. Be physical. Greet them on the white line. How are you doing? Give them a cross check. Set the tone. Now we're successful because we're a good team. We're a team in here. And we win battles and we're disciplined. That's what we're made of. Let's go. When you're walking down the tunnel, you know, and you hear the people screaming, you know, it's, it's awesome. White all night, white all night. You know, it definitely gives you some goosebumps. Boys, this is huge, let's go. Let's go here, White. Defense set the tempo for us, boys. Defense set the tempo. Let's go here. That ball hawk. Boys, we have to believe that we're going to outwork, outwill, outwant every shift. Bring your energy. Let's bring it home. Finish on three. One, two, three. Finish. The Rock in their road blues. The Bandits in their home whites as we are underway. Here come the Rock right off the hop. There's Colin Doyle trying to feed Steph LeBlanc who gets crunched into the boards as the Bandits recover. And here come the Bandits who break the ice and they score. Short side, how do we go short side? Josh Sanderson just got Humbled to the ground and a little bit of feistiness early on, and we may expect a lot of this tonight, Channy. These two teams don't like each other. Where's the penalty? For Beers, and he scores. Rocky, finish the shot! Both teams really want to get this win. the bandits and here's the outlet past it stainhouse who scores nice job nice job way to go boys keep going now the rock will score and so now the bandits are trying to figure things out johnny t drives through the key into the net and like superman out of the boot he ties things up. Oh, short side, good right shot. Right oh, the right side. Hey. Short side. This is 
for the Bandits. And Rock, and they score again. There's Stainhouse delivering. Well, there's Dane Smith, fakes the pass, and then sets up. Guess who? JT John Tavares does it again from a pretty tough angle, but if anybody's going to find the angles, it's JT. And for Tavares, his 11th goal of the season, which now leads the Bandits at the ripe old age of 45. It is also career goal number 790 in his brilliant career. The Bandits can just run this one out. Final score, Buffalo 12, Toronto 10. As the Bandits go off to a standing ovation here in Buffalo. I think my stats are, are a tribute to the great players that I played with over the years. And over the last 23 years, I've played with a lot of really good players. If I wasn't playing lacrosse, I'd be raking leaves on the weekend in the summer. You know, I'd be shoveling in snow in the driveway every week, and I'd be doing the dad stuff. You know what's cool about his career is that it's given us a nice different opportunity to, you know, be together and also to bring the kids into the fold and let them experience it as well. It's part of the reason why I still play is because they won't let me retire. They never want me to retire. They just keep telling me, one more year, Dad, one more year, Dad. I like the competitive nature of lacrosse. It's just it's a fast moving sport. I've always had an aggressive side to me, you know, so I gotta, I gotta somehow use up my energy. And uh, definitely lacrosse is an avenue where I can do that. Like anything you do, you're gonna, you can enjoy doing it more.